Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story, which comes from Black Sheep B Boy, who says, Parents made every single birthday about my sister for the last eight years. And before we do get into the story, I do want to give you a couple of warnings that it contains emotional manipulation, verbal abuse, self-harm, and attempted suicide as well. So if you do want to skip the story, please feel free to do so. Timestamps are always down in the description and along the timeline below. Thank you. OP did make the post, but then it was removed and they posted it on their own page and said, I'm reposting this because I cannot make my update without it. It has not been altered at all. Save for this caption is exactly as it was before being removed by the EP mods. I recently saw a similar story read online and realized I just had to tell my own. This will be my one and only Reddit post and I'm posting it because I thought telling it would help me feel a little better. I've been to some counseling and talking about this in particular really helped. So I thought why not just tell it online too. So I am. I'm 18 this year and fairly recently on my own from my parents. I have a sister about 10 years younger than me. She was an unplanned pregnancy and nearly didn't make it to term. I don't know many of the details of how rough my mother's second pregnancy was since I was never told much, but I do know that it was so hard on her body that my mother could no longer have kids after my sister was born. She was in and out of hospital repeatedly that year. My mother almost didn't survive the birth either. It made her and my father latch onto my little sister because she could have potentially never been born. And ever since then, I felt like I was just the other kid in the house. Except for when they needed me as a free babysitter. The level of favoritism my parents showed long term has me believing they were genuinely sick in the head for not noticing exactly what it was doing to me. And now it's rebounding on them, which I'll explain here. Starting with my 11th birthday. My parents wanted to let my sister blow out my candles because she was two years old and cried at the sight of a birthday cake that wasn't hers. I didn't want to do it, but my parents forced me into it. They relit the candles for me to do it again after her, but the moment felt completely ruined. The same thing happened the next year and the year after that and so on and so forth. They just kept forcing it until it became the norm. My sister had to have presents on my birthdays as well. I never got any on hers either. And when I asked why, they just told me that I'm a boy and boys don't need to worry about it as much. I know I was a kid, but did they really think that was a smart thing to say? Not really, and my parents would always choose a place my sister would like to be at more than me on my own birthday. Eventually, it became more like my sister was getting two birthdays a year and I got none. Beyond this, my parents made their entire lives revolve around my sister. If there's something I wanted to do, my sister had to want to do it too. Otherwise, it was vetoed unless I could do it alone. I learned to just lock myself in my room with my video games because they didn't seem to bother me there. Unless my sister wanted to come running in to annoy me. Hence why I put a lock on the door. My parents wanted me to remove it, but I freaked out because I was an angry teenager who was tired of being intruded on at any given time. My sister came running in more than once when I had no clothes on and my parents were upset at me for being naked in my own room. When I pointed out how ludicrous that was, they withdrew their objection and just let me keep the lock. My sister developed quite the princess complex because of how she was being spoiled on a daily basis, and she was very demanding, so I stayed away from her as much as I feasibly could, whatever excuse I could use to not have to deal with her, even if I had to make up stuff just to have time to myself. My parents hired a teen girl babysitter, and I got more personal time. And then the babysitter quit because my sister wouldn't listen to her and my parents tried to keep from paying by saying she did a bad job. The girl got some other people involved and my parents finally paid her what they owed her. Then they hired another girl to babysit on the regular and this one stayed but my parents still made it clear that I was to be watching my sister any day I had free. Which I went out of my way to make busy at my part time job if I could. My sister treated me as her personal butler and ordered me around. She even had a stupid nickname for me she wouldn't stop using. Just hearing that nickname makes my blood boil and if I didn't give her everything she wanted, she'd cry and call our parents. And then I'd be in trouble for mistreating her. We had many massive arguments because of this and after I refused to yield anymore, my relationship with my parents devolved into barely any words spoken between us for some time. And yet, 
during my high school graduation had the nerve to brag to other parents that they were the reason I worked so hard. Well, they weren't wrong. But the reason they were thinking of was not the one that actually happened. I worked hard just biding my time for when I'd be free. But my parents acted like they'd done so much. Maybe they did before my sister was born, but afterwards it was all about her. They didn't even ask me about school until parent-teacher conferences came up. I graduated with a B and C average, and after my graduation, my parents just took me to some place where my sister would always have more fun than me, even though the trip was supposed to be for me. On my 18th birthday in July, though, things really boiled to the surface. Even though it was my 18th, it didn't feel like it was all about me. I hoped to God that we were going to my favorite restaurant for once, but no. They had the party at a local knockoff Chuck E. Cheese, which is the only place like it nearby to us. So it was the de facto celebratory destination whenever anything big was achieved, including my high school graduation. I did say it was a place my sister would enjoy more than me. I was surrounded by kids half my age having parties and I was so bored with nothing to do but eat mediocre pizza and play claw machines and dated arcade games for tickets to cheaply made prizes that bought me no joy. Then when it was time for cake, my parents came out with one that was pink with white flowers on it. Sure, it had my name on it, but it was very obviously not a boy's cake, and there were only 10 candles. My parents lit the candles and set it right in front of my sister to blow out. That's when it finally happened. I just had this mental moment of all the pent-up hate mentally flashing before me, and then I just started ugly crying. I, an 18-year-old boy, was crying in front of the whole family. Everyone was so shocked that time seemed to just freeze. I got up and all of the stuff I'd been holding in for the past eight years just spilled out like word vomit. The entire family got to be witness to this event and when it was finally over, I just walked outside to sit by the family car. Several relatives trailed out after me to say they were sorry and that they didn't know about the pink cake because my parents kept it covered till it was served. I said it didn't matter that they didn't know. They all sat back and watched as my life was taken over by Little Miss Sunshine for the past eight years had no real birthdays or celebrations of my own. They were all about her. And then on the biggest birthday of my life, they all expected me to just smile and nod like always while they handed my sister a cake that was entirely meant for her, when it wasn't even her birthday. Some of them started giving me apologies, but they made the excuse that all this time they just thought I was okay with it because my parents said I was. I told them I was never okay with it. And my parents forced it on me every year till I just pretended to accept it. I spread my arms out and said to look where we were. Does it look like the place I wanted to celebrate my graduation and 18th birthday? No one even tried to stick up for me all this time. I'm just the other kid while my sister gets everything. I didn't even get to have any of my friends there because my parents stopped letting me invite them long ago after they tried to voice their opinions over my sister getting to blow out my candles. There are 365 days a year and it was so bad to want one that was about me and not her. Instead, I'm treated like the greedy, entitled brat for wanting my own birthday. Then I just went back to ugly crying. My father came outside by that point to yell at me for making such a huge scene, because my mother was crying too. My sister was upset because I ruined her moment and now everybody in there who saw thinks they are bad parents. I ended up yelling at him that they are bad parents and he should know exactly why. Well, after I said that, the rest of the family descended on him like a pack of wolves. Better late than never, I suppose. But I'd never seen anything like it before. My father was practically back right up to the restaurant front door, and then most of the crowd flooded back inside with him to have it out with my mother too. My grandparents stayed with me and apologized for having their eyes shut tight for so long. I don't know what was said to my parents in the restaurant, but it was roughly a half hour before they came back out. And when they did, they looked incredibly defeated. My mother was still sniffing after crying so hard and neither of my parents could look me in the eyes. They both awkwardly apologized for what they did and offered to redo the party elsewhere. But that wasn't really enough for the crowd. One of my uncles hummed rather loudly and my parents said they'd never make me let my sister blow out my candles again or give her my presents on my birthday or make any part of it about her. There was another ahem and my parents also apologized for getting a cake that was obviously not even meant for me and that they just felt like I wasn't worried about cake anymore at my age. Oh boy, was that the wrong thing to say. 
I became furious all over again and yelled at them that my age was irrelevant. They had literally given my birthday to my sister and had no good reason as to why, and they knew it. Then I said there was no point in redoing the party because it's too damn late. They clearly showed that I meant nothing to them. They ruined eight years of my life till I became an adult. What future birthdays with them could I possibly look forward to? Well, my father started to get angry at me for saying that. But when the entire family yelled at him, he shut up. My grandfather told him I'm exactly right. And there is no possible way they can undo the damage done now. He said my parents were awful people, played favorites and treated me like a black sheep ever since my sister was born. And what's more, they were all awful themselves because they just let it happen too. And I'm owed far more than an apology. I was owed my life back. My mother broke down again and tried to come closer to me while crying my name and apologizing, but I refused to let her anywhere near me. And half the family body blocked her from getting close. I just said I couldn't take this anymore and started to walk away. One of my aunts chased me down and brought me back. I could hear multiple family members yelling and cussing at my parents over what happened. I was so upset. I couldn't even feel happy for any bit of justice after all this time. Also, where was my sister when this was all going on? She was still in the restaurant all by herself, eating cake and ripping open presents that were there for me. And if anyone was wondering, yes, my parents served us some cake after I cried and walked out. You'd think doing that wouldn't be their primary focus in the moment, but they were called out on it later. My grandparents got me to calm down and sit in their old minivan while everyone else cleared out the party. My sister threw a huge tantrum after being caught opening my presents one of which was a brand new smartphone that she threw against the wall and broke because she wasn't allowed to keep it. She literally just got a brand new phone on her own birthday a few months earlier. I ended up being so upset that I was ranting that I never wanted to celebrate my birthday again. And my grandparents let me stay the night over at their house. When I came home, I still didn't speak to my parents. My mother just kept crying because I wouldn't talk to her and my father was as closed-mouthed as me. The following weekend, my grandparents convinced me to go with them out to dinner. And when we got there, I was surprised to find a whole new party waiting for me. My parents were there and they kept up with the don't hate us smiles on their faces almost the entire time. There was a big chocolate cake with 18 candles on it. And there was even a banner with my name. They called it my happy belated birthday graduation party because I didn't really get either this year. I did kind of have to pretend to be happy. One good party doesn't undo eight years of favoritism or even make a dent in it really. And where was my sister? She was sitting at the table with her arms folded and her lip curled because it wasn't all about her like it used to be. And rather than sing happy birthday for me, they just sang an, an altered version called happy day. Then as soon as I blew out the candles, my sister screamed. I mean, ear bleedingly loud little girl scream. My parents had to rush her out and then bring her back in later looking more upset than ever. She quietly pouted in her seat for the rest of the party. I did still get a new smartphone as well and my sister got hers taken away, among other things for what she did at the prior party, but the smartphone wasn't all. The whole family had chipped in and gotten me a car. It was just an old white Volvo, but I loved it the moment I laid eyes on it. My grandfather knows a thing or two about cars and fix it up himself. I was so happy, but my sister clearly was not, because she let out another one of those screams. She started having a massive tantrum and demanding a car too. My mother had to take into the bathroom and they didn't come back out for a while. My father just went back to looking defeated. My sister had effectively ruined their attempt at trying to look good in front of the whole family. Multiple family members also had strong words for my parents that my sister was acting that way because they raised her to be a princess spoiled brat. I obviously started driving the car around right away, but only days later my sister actually vandalized the car by taking a hammer and breaking two of the side windows and cracking the windshield to the point the car was undrivable. My parents managed to stop her before she did any more damage, but she screamed bloody murder when they grabbed her and took the hammer away and tried to bite them. Oh, everyone was furious with my sister, especially my grandparents because my grandfather had put so much work into that car and my sister ruined it while having a massive tantrum. My grandparents had spoiled my sister so badly that she couldn't mentally comprehend that I could have something she couldn't and several other family members laid into my parents about how they were setting my sister up for failure by making her an entitled brat that expects the world to be given to her, and she's going to have a terrible adult life because they won't put their feet down and teach her some respect. Well, her actions didn't go unpunished. My sister was grounded for the rest of the summer and effective of the new school year, 
was sent to boarding school. My mother cried like a baby about it too, but my father had to be adamant that it was the only way to start undoing the damage they had done. Yes, they fully acknowledged they are at fault. It was kind of hard for them not to since no one sided with them at all. My sister is absolutely miserable at that school. She hates the clothes, she hates the rules, and she's been lying almost constantly. But with cameras almost everywhere now, she's not getting away with any of it. Our parents tried to visit her a few times, but she just screamed at them for putting her in that place. From what I hear, this may be her school life till she's 18 years old. My parents did pay to fix my car. They had an auto glass company replace the windows and windshield, and it looks just like it did before. In August, my grandfather came to me and said if I was interested, he found me a job working for a friend, but it was 40 miles away, so I'd need to move out of my parents' house unless I wanted that commute. I was all for moving. Finding a first apartment wasn't so easy though. I had to get approved for a credit card just to get accepted for a studio. But I got it, and I've been living where I am now since September. My parents keep trying to contact me, but I rarely speak to them. Anytime we do speak, I just feel awkward and uncomfortable. My grandfather has suggested that they simply don't want to acknowledge how badly they failed as parents, and trying to get me to forgive them will make them feel better about themselves or something like that. But I'm not going to forgive, not anytime soon. I'm finally happy and away from them. Now they've got nothing. They didn't have me, they didn't have my sister, and my parents had to take more hours at work because boarding school for my sister is not cheap. Nor can I imagine was the part they had to throw for me. All the repairs to my car. Empty house, angry relatives, and the only thing they have left is their work. Feels like incredible misery to me. And I don't take delight in it. But it is the result of their own actions after all. Edit. I'd like to thank everyone for all the awards that I've gotten. It really means a lot to me. I know my post was long and a lot to read, but I just need to get the whole thing out and I feel a lot better after having done so. I notice a few calling this post fake in the comments in various ways and I don't blame you. I'd be highly skeptical reading this and wondering the same thing in your shoes, but I lived it. Some parents just really are like that. I've also been contacted by a few people who went through similar and even worse situations. With all the bad parents out there, is it really all that unbelievable as to what mine did? Granted, the whole family running back into the restaurant to have words with my parents did seem like a stretch, but I come from one of those close-knit families where we stick together a lot and do things in groups, and it can very easily turn into an entire group against one person at gatherings. I've seen a drunk cousin be surrounded and then removed from the party to sober up in another room because he was being highly inappropriate. I'm not exactly a fan of group mentalities myself, but it ended up saving me because my parents were shamed beyond words for what they'd done. They couldn't even form a proper reason as to why they did what they did to me without sounding like even worse people. So they've basically surrendered saying they have no excuse and are heavily trying to get on my good side. And while a lot of you are praising my relatives for how they helped me, I'm pretty sure a lot of that help was out of shame. They were there for most of those eight birthdays, save for two years because of COVID. But in those other six, they didn't do anything. They had disapproving looks on their faces that my sister got to blow out my candles, but they just stayed quiet. Why? Well, my dad is the son of the head of the family, my grandfather, and my grandfather is a fairly intimidating person. Be on his good side and he'll do whatever it takes to help you. Be on his bad side and the entire family hates you. A good reason why I don't like group mentalities. But once my grandfather basically said they were at fault for not doing anything to help me for years, they all felt shamed. And they all chipped in for the cost of my car with so many relatives they didn't have to donate much each to afford it i had the receipt for the car when i registered it in my name they bought it for two thousand dollars and then put more into it for some parts and tires my grandfather personally gave it a tune-up and changed the fluids my grandmother deep cleaned the interior and i'm extremely thankful to them all but i still want to distance myself a bit i need time to work things out on my own and i probably won't see my parents until thanksgiving or christmas some have also compared my sister to that character Eric Cartman from South Park, and it's a pretty close comparison. My sister is chubby because my parents fed her a lot of junk food. She hates eating anything healthy. I once saw her put gummy bears on mashed potatoes. The thought of eating that combination turns my stomach. A poor diet also made her spend long periods in the bathroom. My parents had to buy fiber snacks for her to eat to remedy that, and I don't think they were cheap to get the ones that actually tasted good. My sister is also extremely bossy and likes to think she's in charge. She ordered me around near constantly, which is why I often lock myself in my room to get away from her. 
She lost a lot of friends for being so bossy and controlling, and my parents would just tell her that the other kids were just jealous of how special she was. My sister even referred to herself as a princess often. And the epic tantrum she had when not getting her way do remind me of Eric Cartman. I know my sister isn't stupid either. She doesn't try very hard at all and had a C average in school. If she actually applied herself, she'd probably be a straight A student. And we do have a further update to this in a moment. And that is just absolutely heartbreaking for OP to hear their full story and what they've went through. And, and we've seen it many a time on this subreddit where parents favor one of their children. They, you know, they usually call the golden child in these situations and how they absolutely destroy their relationships with their other children because like in this story op just wants to be away from them they don't want nothing to do with them and there's no way you can blame op for that he's been hurt time and time again by people that should be loving and supportive towards him and it's just fucking heartbreaking and the sister's in a boarding school now because of the way the parents enabled her behavior as well a positive out of this though to see that op op's life is moving in a more positive direction you know getting out of that area getting a job, getting their own apartment. And I hope that they're sort of seeing some sort of professional help at the same time as well, because eight years of that sort of stuff, that's got to mess your head up. And I'll just give you an overview of the comments. There was a lot of supportive comments towards OP, a lot of people relating as well and saying, you know, they went through something very, very similar in their own lives. And OP responded to a few of those comments too. But OP updates around a year later and says, it's been what, a year now? I didn't log back in for a long time because I thought I was done here. But then one day I decided what the heck and just popped back in again. Only to see numerous private messages asking for updates. So I'll give one. What I'm about to tell you is mostly pieced together from what my parents and grandparents told me. So if it sounds too crazy, just remember I'm basically retelling what I found out. Yes, I am doing fine. But the same cannot be said for my parents and little sister. My sister... Sometime after my previous post attempted several things in order to get out of the boarding school. After none of her lies and schemes got her anything, she tried to simply do nothing, but that didn't work out. Then she tried a hunger strike. She said she would refuse to eat anything unless our parents came and took her home. My mother nearly jumped in the car to go rescue her baby, but my father had to stand in her way and remind her my sister's behavior was their fault. My sister's hunger strike didn't even last two days before she was demanding food in the cafeteria. She wasn't allowed sweets or snacks unless they were healthy. Especially since a pediatrician warned my parents that my sister, little Miss Sunshine, was at risk of future diabetes and even possibly having her growth stunted unless she got her weight under control and ate foods with proper nutrients. As in, no more gummy bears on mashed potatoes. Of course, my sister tried becoming a bully to other girls in the boarding school. But they didn't take her crap. One day she picked a fight and got beaten up pretty badly when she was set upon by multiple other girls at once. And as a crowd, they kicked her until they were broken up by a teacher. My sister didn't suffer any serious injuries, but she was scraped and bruised all over. Yes, she blamed everyone else but herself. And I heard she actually stated that the other girls should just do as she says. They did not, though she was shunned by them. I heard she had quite the tantrum over it. She'd gone her way with everyone for so long that it was mentally inconceivable for her to not get what she wanted. My mother repeatedly snuck junk food to my sister at the boarding school and my sister got caught with it. My parents had a huge fight about it but my mother didn't try to sneak her any more junk food once the jig was up. My sister was and still desires to be a junk food addict. That's right, she's barely changed in the past year. Are any of you really surprised? I'm not. She's only slightly better in the fact that she's somewhat more accepting she's not the center of the universe. Her schemes to get out of boarding school only escalated. After only a few months there, she resorted to self-harm to try and get her way. She somehow got her hands on a knife in the cafeteria and stood on the table threatening herself with it until they gave her candy and sent her home. Yes, she didn't demand to be sent home. She wanted candy too. I did say before I'd seen her put gummy bears on mashed potatoes in my original post. Her favorite thing to put gummy bears on was food she didn't like because that's the only way our parents could get her to eat it. Can you imagine gummy bears on salad? It kind of defeats the point of salad but she regularly brought a bag of gummy bears to the table when we ate. I can't even look at gummy bears without remembering. Well my sister was brought what sweets they could scrounge up while they tried to talk her down but at some point she slipped and fell off the table. 
This resulting fall broke her left arm, a clavicle, and she had a forehead concussion. At this point, the boarding school had enough of her and didn't want her to return once out of hospital. In fact, her attempt at ending herself only landed her in her worst place, a mental ward for children. She's been forced into therapy and diagnosed with a heavy case of narcissism she was raised into having. She cannot leave the ward unless my parents take her out. They've also forced her to continue her schooling from there and keep to a very strict healthy diet. It could literally be described as her personal hell. My mother wanted to go to the ward and get her precious baby out, but she and my father got into a huge fight about it. And in that fight, she hit him with the nearest thing she could grab, which happened to be a bottle that was on the kitchen counter. The bottle broke on his face, cracked his cheekbone, and cut him up pretty badly. Police were called, and he had to be taken to the hospital while my mother had to be carted away in the back of a police car. My mother ended up getting psych-evaluated and committed for several months herself, and she was forced to confront her own fierce desires to enable my sister. Turns out it stems from serious mental traumas my mother had from her own childhood. But no one else knows or will tell me anything more than that. There was and still is talk of future divorce from my parents. But neither of them have gone any farther than sleeping in separate bedrooms so far. As for me, well, my 19th birthday wasn't that long ago. My grandparents threw me a party at a restaurant they know I like. My parents attended and so did my sister. She was briefly allowed time out of the ward. But I could see the pure bitterness in her eyes. She sat there just looking like before, lip curled and glaring at me like she wanted me to be on fire. She lost a fair bit of weight by then since she hadn't been allowed junk food for so long and her diet plan is going to keep on for some time. In fact, the junk food from my birthday party was the first she had in a pretty long time, but she still couldn't stand not being the center of attention. This time when I blew out my candle, she did not scream, instead began ugly crying. I can tell you right now that this was just more of a manipulation. She was just crying and saying why over and over again. I know she's only nine, but remember last year she was eight and demanding a car of her own just because I was gifted one at 18. She can't even get a learner's permit until she's 15. At my 19th birthday, my sister got on the floor to tantrum that there was no pizza, no gifts for her, no prizes, no nothing. Then she started cursing at our parents before trying to storm out the restaurant. She was basically trying to copy what I did last year in her own twisted way. You can say I'm thinking too hard about that, but I know my sister. And if she thinks she's doing something will get her way, she'll do it. My parents just apologized to everyone and then took my sister home early. But not before my grandfather went over to speak to them. I got some details from my grandmother later. He told them that they better not take my sister to party elsewhere or give her what she wants. Because this will never end if they don't stop for good. After that, my sister was taken out kicking and screaming because she had heard everything and realized her tantrums didn't work. She was driven back to the ward the next morning, and that's where she is now. I have no idea how much longer she'll be there. She's just a kid, but the most stubborn one I've ever seen. She'll likely not change until she reaches her lowest point, and until then, she's going to be stuck in a place that does no enabling of her demands. No one, not even my parents, have attempted to put any blame on me for my sister's actions this past year. They've had to accept that I had zero fault in this, and they raised my sister to be a narcissist. And enabling a narcissist is also a form of addiction from what I've seen and heard. My sister has not been diagnosed with any sort of mental illnesses aside from narcissism. In fact, she's smarter than me from what I've heard. She was tested having an IQ of around 110. She just doesn't like to apply herself unless there's some kind of reward in it for her. She was raised this way, and I'm guessing it'll take years to make her better. As for me, I'm doing well on my own. I admit I had to learn to properly budget and take care of my own necessities. It's not easy to adult, but it's still a thousand times better than life I had been living with my parents and sister. Edit. Someone has brought up that my sister being in long-term ward just narcissism makes no sense. I agree that normally it wouldn't. If there's any deeper diagnosis, then it's being kept from me. I can tell there's some things they don't tell me, and I'm not able to ask a doctor because I'm not my sister's parent. That said, my sister is also very self-destructive to try and get her way. Her threatening to use a knife on herself to get out of boarding school was actually just one of many similar incidents that followed. Since being in the ward, she's been made to realize she's not a princess, but at the same time, she still has to mentally do whatever it takes to get her way. After my 19th birthday, she made similar threats of self-harm to my parents if they didn't take her out to eat fast food, and then tried to harm herself after being denied. Her most common tactic is to hit her head on a wall. My mother didn't want to report this to the ward, but my father did. My sister can and has committed self-harm for emotional blackmail in the past month alone. 
though her attempts have become fewer from what I know. She also apparently lies and says her own doctors hurt her. But her stories never add up, so I guess on top of narcissism, pathological lying might also be a factor. And all that information I just gave is very likely why she's in a long-term ward. If she was home, my parents would slowly cave to her demands all over again. And then things would just go back to how they were somewhat, which is likely something little Miss Sunshine is counting on. What an absolute crazy situation. And, you know, we, we got a brief paragraph in the update about how OP is doing, you know, they're having to learn to budget and take care of their own necessities and stuff. And, you know, that they, they're a thousand times better than the life that they had. I would love to have heard more about how they're doing in their life and a bit more detail about that. But, you know, that's up to them if they ever want to reveal that information. But it sounds like they're doing much better. And, you know, I can only wish them all the best. And I really can't help hope that the sister gets the help that she clearly so desperately needs. And that's not me excusing any of the behavior whatsoever towards anyone because, you know, that, that it was all incredibly messed up. But... The alternative of her not getting help is continuing down this path of, of this behavior, which is no good for herself, is no good for the people around her, and is only going to cause damage and destruction on her path. So this kid is nine years old. That's just, that is just tragic for me. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories your love your support your time not just towards me but towards the ops as well in these stories and hopefully i will see you in the next one take care and much love